Happy New Year. Hope you guys are well. Saturday night and we're going to talk about Groundhog's Day. Many of you will have Groundhog year in 2023 and I'm going to break it down for you. I believe that this video is really going to help you a lot. Um, and it was on my heart tonight. I can't believe I already feel like sweating. This is so weird. It's so cold. <laughs> but anyway, listen, if I feel like sweating, I'm going to get up and then come and sit back down. But anyway, many of, many of us are going into 2023. I know a lot of us are not going to set any change or um, whatever you call it that you want to do different in 2023. And, you know, the Lord talks, I'm going to talk spiritual tonight because so many of us think that things are going to change. We really do. We have this idea that things are going to get better and things are going to change and things are going to be different now and people are going to be different and circumstances are going to be different and although god tells us to pray and to hope but the hope isn't for this life the hope is for eternal life and what we expect in eternity and yes we can believe by faith but you know most people's faiths are shipwrecked because they have so much belief that something is going to change and it never does or somebody's going to live and they don't or they're going to be healed of a disease and they're not and they die or you know this or in the future you know god's going to send me my husband or wife and he doesn't here and here's another year that goes by with that because i'm going to break this down for you guys and i hope this really blesses you but a lot of us think, you know, now somebody in our family is going to get saved or something's going to change in our relationship with them. And like I said, hope in hope itself is futile. But our hope has to be trusting in God's character and his nature. Okay, it's not about, wow, you know, I'm, I'm going to have money this year. I'm going to have a house this year. I'm going to have a car this year. I'm going to have a boyfriend or a girlfriend or my spouse is going to change. Or, you know, now my kids are going to change. My parents are going to change. You know, now, you know, God's going to heal me of a certain disease. Some, you know, now something major is going to happen. Do you know that we're at the end? Do you know we're in the last days? What does God say about the last days, about what's going to happen? Listen, the last days are characterized by everything bad. The only good thing that's going to happen is the rapture to get us out of here. So listen to me, you guys. The Bible does not talk about a revival. No, it talks about the great falling away from the faith. 2023, the future, what does the future hold for us? There'll be wars, rumors of wars, earthquake, pestilence, earthquakes, more and more and more, the birth pains, pestilence increasing. Look at this new variant that we have. It's taken over 40% of the United States and all over the world. People are on the hospitals right now. The hospitals are full with all kinds of diseases. Jesus said these are birth pains. These are signs of the end times. Look at what happened in Buffalo, New York. What are we expecting for 2023? Listen, 2020, 2021, 2022, it's not gotten better. Look at the prices of the economy. Look at all the people that died in Buffalo in the snowstorm. Look at all these people that died of the freezing temperatures, young and old. So many dead from being frozen. What is God telling us? Look at what's happening in Ukraine. Look at all the power outages. People are living without power, right? 
People are living without power in cold temperatures. Look at the prices of food. Look at the economy. Look at how they're skyrocketing. A dozen eggs, I, I heard the other day, what, nine, nine, ten dollars, twelve dollars a dozen in some places? 2023. We're see the problem with humans is we're putting our trust in 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 this world, in this universe, in, in, in the vibes, the new age stuff, all the stuff that 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 is against the Bible that we can create. We can create our own reality. If we can think it, we can have it. If we have good vibes or we think good things, then we can make it happen. What? That's foolishness. What has that ever worked for you? If we can just meditate and do yoga enough, you know, then we can we can tap into the universe and and, and have power over our own lives. When have you ever had power over your own life? When have you ever had control over another human being? When have you ever been able to change anything? I'm going to break this down. Prayer can change things, but it will not force God. It will, it will not mean God will force somebody to change. Okay? And it doesn't mean that we can have things our own way. Okay, this is not about life having things our way. So I'm going to break this down. 2023, what does 2023 hold? Pestilences, more pestilences, more earthquakes, more variants, more diseases, more wars, more rumors of wars, more immorality, more perversion. You think what we see in school with the drag queens is perversion? Well, just wait till 2023. I'm not trying to take you down. I'm trying to get you excited because Jesus chose you and me to be born for such a time as this. This is an amazing time to be alive and to serve the Lord because we are being used to preach the gospel to the nations, to every creature. We are being used. What a great time to use social media and everything that we have to push the gospel of Jesus Christ out there. What an amazing time. But for you lukewarm Christians, it's going to be a time. It's going to be a time of Jacob's troubles for you. Okay. It's going to be a time when you're going lukewarm. People are going into the tribulation. The ones that have their lamps burning with oil or not. So listen, 2023, I'm going to give you a little story. Okay. Most of my Christian walk, not all of it, but the beginning majority of it was me going year after year, relationship after relationship, family members, friends, marriage. It doesn't matter who it was, okay? What happens is we think that we can change things, and but it's like Groundhog Day, okay? So women especially, but even men have this tendency to be rescuers. And we think, you know what? We see a little glimmer of hope in somebody. We see a lim little glimmer, whether it's a family member or, or a spouse or, you know, a sibling or a parent. I don't care what it is. But we see this little glimmer of hope in somebody. Oh, man, they, they're talking about Jesus. They're talking about going to church. They're talking about, you know, that, uh, you know, listening to Christian music now. You guys. I'm going to read a scripture to you. Matthew 19, 25. The disciples are talking to Jesus and, and Jesus is telling them, again, I tell you, it's easier for a camel to pass through an eye of a needle than a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Then the disciples said, when the disciples heard this, they were greatly astonished and asked, who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, with man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. You guys, you got to stop going into 2023 and thinking that if you can love people enough, they're going to change. Now 2023 is going to bring this great change. 
if you can give enough to them, even if you die for them, you know they're not going to change. You can give everything you got. You can give all your goods. You can give your body to be burned in the fire. You can show all kinds of charity. You can do everything for somebody. You can, you can give them your last penny. You can give them your last breath. They're not going to change because without the power of God and them wanting to change and surrendering your li their life to Jesus, it ain't going to happen. Your marriages aren't going to change. Your siblings ain't going to change. Your parents ain't going to change. Your, your children ain't going to change. I don't know why I'm going like this, but I'm just saying it's dramatic. But listen, we live our lives thinking every month, every day, the next year, things are not going to be so different now. People are going to change. No, they're not. They're going to still keep serving that devil. See, intentions are not change. You can have an intent to change, but it's not enough. You understand? You can have the desire to change, but desire is not enough. You can have, you can have the, the, the want, the will, you know, you, you can say, you know, I want to change, but that ain't enough. The only thing that's going to be enough is repent like right now. That's it. And y'all think you can go into 2023 and things are going to get better for your marriage and better for your family and better for economy and better for the government and better for everything. No, Jesus said that men are going to wax worse and worse. They're going to be deceived themselves and they're going to continue to deceive others. I didn't write the Bible. God did. Only God can change a human heart. It is possible. But he's not, it's supernatural, okay? But again, we can't force God to control situations or people. It is up to him, okay? They have a free will. The Bible declares if my people who are called by my, listen, your church, all those ch crazy Christians, you know, they ain't going to change. They're into false teaching and they watch all these conspiracy theories on YouTube and believe the earth is flat. They ain't going to change. You can't change people. Deception is at an all time high. It's going to get, it's getting worse. It's not getting better. Jesus said it's not going to get better. People are going to hate you. Second Timothy three, they're going to be lovers of themselves. Narcissism. Are you tired? You think in 2023, they're going to pick up that phone. Hold on. Let me grab the phone. They're going to pick up that phone and call you. Hey, Jennifer, I'm sorry. Hey, Linda, I'm sorry. Hey, Vanessa, I'm sorry. Hey, Wanda, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry for sinning against you. I'm sorry. I, I repent to you. Please forgive me. Don't, don't, don't. <laughs> you girls are on there. Don't live that way. Do not go into 2023 having some false hope, okay? I have had one person in thousands in my whole life that has ever called me to repent. One person in thousands that did me wrong and treated me wrong, just with an attitude. And you know who you are if you're listening, because you're still my friend. Only one person out of thousands and in 33 years of being a Christian, have I ever had call me to repent of their nasty, well, it wasn't even a nasty attitude. It wasn't even that bad, but he just, he went on and on about something that I don't want to hear about. Okay. But he, he just was a little aggressive with that. It was just his attitude. And he called me the next day to repent. I'm telling you God, honest truth, you guys. I'm telling you, you ain't going to get these. You ain't going to get, I'm sorry. I repent. Please forgive me. You're not going to get it because people are so full of pride in these end times. They don't care who they hurt. They don't, the Christians don't care how they treat other Christians. They don't pursue 
peace with all men. They don't do what's right. They just think they can do whatever they want to you. And it's and, and God's okay with that. Are you following me? Prideful. Prideful. Lovers of self, boasters, prideful, haters of those that are good, with truce breakers, not coming unappeasable, not coming to any truce, not trying to make things right in relationships before God with each other. God said this is gonna happen. He says, from such turn away. He didn't say keep talking to them so they'll repent one day and they see how much you love them and how much you sacrifice yourself for them. Did he say that? No, 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 no. Mm -mm. God said from such turn away. Because they're wicked in their heart. They don't want to change. So you can't go into 2023 thinking now, because see, I don't want your hopes to get crushed. Our hope is in Christ alone. I don't want you to be in some you know, romanticizing some future event that's going to happen. That's not going to happen. You, do you understand? I don't want you to, to have this, this, some kind of fantasy that's not in the Bible. Okay. The Bible, the Bible, God, God changes lives of people that have humility. Okay. The children of Israel wandered for 40 years. So that means, you know, 40 years of life. And we're going into 2023. And so many of you have been wandering for 40 years, 50 years, 60 years, 30 years, 20 years, 70 years, 60, 65 years. I don't know how old you are. You keep going around that same mountain over and over again. You know, doing things the same way, expecting different results. How is that working for you? It's not going to work. You know, change is not caused by force. It's caused by humility and faith and a desire to turn from your wicked ways. A lot of people didn't get that memo. They got another gospel. Okay. You, listen, the mercy that God has provided is Jesus. He's the only way. So when you go into 2023 and you expect your wife to be different and you expect your husband to be different and you expect God to do things year after year and then you're disappointed because God didn't do them, you can't live this way. That's not up to you. Your life is not dictated by what, what happens around you. Your life is dictated by your relationship with the Lord and trusting that he knows what he's doing. I mean, what if he sends a, one of your loved ones to hell? Because that's what they chose. They didn't want God. God didn't supernaturally give him a Saul road to Damascus experience. What, what are you going to do? What are you going to do in 2023 when some of you don't have enough money for food or you lose your jobs or, you know, an earthquake happens or the United States gets hit with, with another 9-11? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? This one man, he went in the Buffalo snowstorm. He went to his mother who was on oxygen. She lost her power. She, he tried to get her out of the house and she couldn't walk anymore in the snow and she collapsed and dead right in his arms. What are you going to do? What are you going to do when bad things happen to God's people? What are you, what are you going to do when you go into 2023 and you hear of a nuclear bomb going off or an EMP hits the United States? What are you going to do? Are you going to say, God, I thought... See all those false prophets in 2020 that prophesied vision? Vision? What kind of vision did we have? All those false prophets. All those false prophets that prophesied that you know who was going to be 45th was going to be president again? Who are all these false prophets that you guys are following? Why are that's your own fault? You're following them. Who who told you it's a flat earth? 
that's your own fault. You're being deceived slowly because you already got that pride. There's some pride coming in. God said even the very elect will be deceived. There'll be false signs and false wonders. They'll listen. You have got to go into 2023 believing that God's going to do whatever he wants because he's sovereign. Whether he answers your prayer or not. Because he gets to choose and decide what he does in your life. You don't. He may not save your husband or wife or your children or your parents or your siblings or your aunties and uncles. He may not. They might die. He may not heal your loved one. He may, he may, there may be no encounter with God. Listen, people make their choices. God ain't going to force it. So what are you going to do again? Be disappointed at God. You're going to be angry at God. Or you're going to say, well, I didn't have enough faith. People are going to lie to you and say you didn't have enough faith. I mean, what a horrible weight to live under going into 2023. Some of y'all say, well, now I'm going to quit drinking. Now I'm going to quit smoking. Now I'm going to quit doing drugs. Now I'm going to quit sleeping around. Now I'm going to quit cussing. Now I'm going to quit looking at porn. Now I'm going to quit all this stuff. Let me know how that works for you. Because you see, without Christ Jesus, you can do nothing. You can't change yourself. You can't even change another human being. Only Jesus can change you and another human being. You can't do it. You can believe for signs, wonders, and miracles. You can believe for God to do the incredible. But if he doesn't, do it. Just like the, child, the, the three Hebrew children, God can deliver us. But if he doesn't, we ain't going to bow down to you, O Nebuchadnezzar. We ain't going to bow down to you. He's able to do anything that he wants. But if he doesn't, what are you going to do? 2023 is going to bring a lot of shaking in every area. Things have not gotten better. Look at the housing market. Look at the economy. Look at the weather. Look at the wars coming. Look at the rumors of wars. Look at the nuclear threats. Look at, look at, look at the weather, what it's doing across our nations. God said it's going to get worse. So I want you guys to get ready for 2023 spiritually. If you're not in the ark, it's time to get into the ark because the door of the ark is getting ready to get shut. You got to get in the ark now. As in the days of Noah, so shall be in the coming of the Son of Man. As in the days of Lot, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. The angels went, listen, only eight people were saved out of Noah's time. Okay, out of the millions on earth, I don't know, billions maybe, I don't know how many, but millions at least only eight. During Lot's time, it was only Lot and his two daughters. Three out of five cities, Sodom, Gomorrah, and the three other cities. Only three. Lot's Son-in-laws wanted to stay behind and they made fun of the coming judgment that the angel said. Lot's wife became a pillar of salt. So that means only Lot and his two daughters were rescued by the angels out of Sodom. It was so perverse, just like today, that, that God, God said that he destroyed the whole earth. He repented that he made man. Can you imagine a father? Not wanting, like, so disgusted at his children, like, at his creation that he says, I repent that I made man. And he destroyed them all. This, listen, we're living as in the days of Noah. So shall the coming of the Son of Man be. They were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage and buying and selling and planting and doing business. And suddenly the flood came. The flood's coming, you guys. The judge, the wrath of God's coming. We're closer now than we've ever been before. 
We don't know the day or the hour, but we know the signs of the times. That's what Jesus' disciples said, Lord, when, what is the sign of your coming in the end of the age? And Jesus said to them, take heed that no man deceive you. Deception is incredible right now in the body of Christ, in the world, everywhere. False teaching, false teachers, false signs, false lying wonders, false everything. He didn't say true prophets are coming. He said false prophets are coming. He never said beware true prophets are coming. He said throughout the whole word false prophets are coming. In 2023, more false prophets are coming. More false prophecies are coming. More false people in the church are coming. More big evangelists and teachers are coming. They're prophesying falsely to you. They're catering to the itching ears because that's what you want. Many of you want this. More evil is coming in 2023. Even though the days get darker, those that shine in Christ will get brighter and brighter in darkness. That means you will be set apart even more. That means you, who you are in Christ will be more evident his people will become more evident because we don't cater to the things of the world. We don't support same sex, anything. We don't go to their weddings. We don't go to their, you know, events. We don't support abortion. We don't support evil. We don't support what they're doing in schools right now. We don't support, you know, um, the woke and cancel cultures. We don't support evil. So in 2023, guess what? It's going to get darker. But the children of God, we can expect. We got a hope that's not of this world. We don't belong to this world. The kingdom of God is from another world. We're in another world. His, he, said, he said that my kingdom is not of this world. It's from, it's, he's coming to get us and take us for seven years. For seven years, we're going to be up there. Then we're coming back at the Battle of Armageddon, riding on white horses. And then we're going to be reigning and ruling with them for a thousand years. And then guess what? Satan's going to be loosed again. Satan's going to be loosed again to deceive the nations again. We got a while yet. Then we're then the great white throne judgment. Then the Bema Seat of Christ. There's a lot that the Bible, we still got left. Okay, but right now, before the rapture of the church, before we're taken away, before we're caught up to meet the Lord in the air, listen, we're going to be caught up together with the Lord to meet him in the air. Then we're coming back riding on white horses. Yes. To the battle of Armageddon, the valley of Megiddo. It's going to be incredible to ride with God. This is what we got to look forward to. 2023. Like I said, and every day after and every year after is going to be complete chaos and degradation morally, spiritually, financially, economically, wars and rumors of wars, more deaths. Every, listen, this is the birth pains that Jesus is talking about in Matthew. These are birth pains. When you see all these things come to pass, the earthquakes are birth pains. When you see these earthquakes going on in California and in Philippines and Japan and, and all over the world and, and the, at the Midwest and North America, listen, Mexico, these are increasing in frequency and power. And, and during, during the seven-year tribulation, there's going to be an earthquake so powerful that has never happened before. I believe that's the time where everything's going to, all, all the nations are going to be shifted. A third of the population of the world is going to be dead. Okay, this, there's going to be the mark of the beast. We got the mark coming up. If you are listening to me, do not take that mark. Do not take the mark of the beast on your right hand or your forehead to buy or sell. Because the Antichrist is going to make you take that mark. We're preparing right now. 2023 is even more preparation for that mark. Okay, this is all that we're expecting right now. The saints of God, I don't care if all your lost people think we're crazy because when we disappear, it ain't going to be aliens that take us. It's going to be Jesus himself that's going to take us up. God's going to tell his son, go get him. Go get him. 
and people that are going to think we're going to be taken by aliens. 2023 is going to be Groundhog Day for most people. Most people live in the same way, the same sins, the same expectations, the same degradation, the same compromise, the same, same lukewarmness, the same everything. Like I said, intent is not enough. You have to repent. Now, today is the day of salvation, God said. Today. He didn't say tomorrow. Tomorrow might be too late. You are one heartbeat away from eternity. One heartbeat away. And you're willing to take that chance with your eternity? This flesh is decays when it starts. When you're born, it starts decaying and you're going to die. You're going to die. You could die in 2023. You could die before the midnight hour. Before the clock strikes the midnight hour. Are you going to take that chance with your soul? Because eternity is in the heart of man. You live what? For how many years? 70? If you're blessed, 80? That's all you got. Some people that are rich live longer. God gives people time to repent. He's patient. He's not willing that any should perish for all those O-S-A-S, one saved, always saved. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to know, to know him. He's patient with us. 2023 is bring, y'all, 2023 is bringing more judgment, is bringing more chaos, is bringing more lawlessness, is bringing more hardened hearts, is bringing more economy crashes, is bring, prices are going to skyrocket, skyrocket, the housing market jobs, um, storms are going to get even more fierce. I'm going to talk about that in another video. Y'all should be prepared because we don't know when Jesus is coming. We just know this is a sign of the times. So prepare for 2023. Don't live like it's groundhogs. Excuse me, I'm burping. Don't live like it's groundhogs day. Satan has put a veil over the minds of the unbelievers that they cannot receive what I'm saying or what you're saying. They think you're all crazy. They think you're crazy. When that rapture happens and you're gone out of here, they're going to think the earth cleansed itself and the aliens came and took us. All these crazy holy rollers, Bible thumping preachers, evangelists out there. Y'all ought to know we are getting ready for such a time that we have never seen before in history. God handpicked you and me to be a part of this incredible time in the Bible, in the end times, to prepare us and to preach the word of God, to get as many souls saved as possible. Make 2023. Ask God to fill you with the Holy Spirit so that you can be like me and others preaching the gospel with total boldness, no fear of man to warn the sinner to repent, to warn the lukewarm to get right, to warn all those, to warn all those that are that are compromisers to repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. The trumpet is getting ready to sound and the ark, the door of the ark is getting ready to shut. Get on that ark before it's too late and the rain start, starts dropping. The rain is getting ready to start dropping here. 2023 is going to be a shaking and a waking for, for many of you. They're not prepared. And you guys are going to think, why didn't I seek the Lord? Why is it Groundhog's Year for me again? Why am I expecting things to be different, doing things the same way? Why is the same thing happening to me over and over again? Why am I still defeated? Why am I still in my sins? Why am I still lukewarm? Why don't I have the fire of God? Why do I have the same friends? Why do I have the same lukewarm friends? Why do I have the same compromising friends that still do yoga, still do Halloween? Why do you still support them, you sinner? Why? Why do you compromise with the holy God that has asked you to repent year after year after year after year and your spiritual life has become groundhog? Groundhog day, another day, another minute, another hour, another year of a wasted life that can't be used by God because you will not repent. But God says, repent. 
because I'm a holy God looking for a church without spot, blemish, or wrinkle. That's what he's coming for. He's not coming for a spotted bride. He's not coming for a bride that's unclean, that has mingled itself with the world. He's coming for a bride that's clean and holy and pure and cleanses itself from all filthiness of the flesh and the spirit. That's what God is coming for. He's coming for a church that is not compromised with the world and the sins of the world. I felt the Spirit of God on me right there. When will you repent? What will it take for you to repent instead of living Groundhog's Day another year, a, a meaningless life, a meaningless, empty, religious life? What will it take for you to repent of compromising? And instead of living the way that you're living, compromising with the world, go on to gay weddings. Immorally living with somebody, having sex outside of marriage, looking at porn, celebrating Halloween, going to see Harry Potter. And you defy, you defy the living God. You defy him. He's a holy God. You have no fear of God and you think he understands. You think God understands your sins, but God says repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. And you listen to all these false teachers, tickling ears, tickle, tickle, tickle. That's what you want. You want to hear good things and positive things. Don't listen to me. I, t I tell you positive things of what God has put in my heart. Go listen to Joel Osteen. You want positive motivation, lies? Go listen to him. You want truth? Listen to me. Read the word. I'm just saying the word. You don't want to listen to me? Don't follow me. Get off my social media. I'm, I'm trying to save your life. I'm trying to save your soul. I'm trying to tell you, you got to repent. There is no way 2023 is going to be any different if Jesus comes you're going to get left behind. It's going to be seven years of wrath for you on the earth. You, It's going to be hell on earth for you. It could be in 2023. The rapture could happen in 2023. Yep, it could happen tonight. It could happen in the next second. He's going to come in an hour that we don't expect. He's going to come like a thief in the night. It could be at the rapture or your death. Which one do you choose? Which one? Choose. Because you're going to have to stand before the living God and you're going to either help, help, or heaven. That's where you're going. Two places. And you ain't going to heaven because you're good. There's a lot of good people in hell. Millions, billions of good people in hell. Jesus said, if you reject my son, you reject me. That's what, that's what God says. You reject my son, you reject me. Jesus is the only way to heaven. There ain't no other religion. There ain't no nothing. Nothing's going to get you to heaven but Jesus. He is the only way. He is the only truth. All you guys are reading Christianity, the Bible, and all these other books. Lies, lies, lies. Lies. That's why you're so messed up. You're getting more messed up. You got to repent. Jesus may come in 20... Okay, I'm ending it right here. 2023... I'm going to summarize this. It's going to be worse than 2022, 2021, 2020, 2019, 2018, 2017, 2016, 2015, 2014, and it goes on. Jesus said in the last days, there'll be wars and rumors of wars and earthquakes and pestilence and, and, and false Christs, false apostles, false teachers, false everything. He said there to be lovers of self, proud, blasphemers, unholy, ungrateful, unthankful, disobedient to parents, unloving, unappeasable. People, they'll be seducers. They'll be, they'll be deceiving themselves and deceiving others. It's going to get worse and worse and worse and worse. This is what we can expect for our future. The Bible is true. But those that put their hope in Christ have a kingdom that's not of this world to look forward to. We have 
in the midst of an evil world that's going to perish and be destroyed, we can look forward to a kingdom and hope and we can have joy unspeakable and full of glory because his Holy Spirit is still available for you if you repent. His power and his incredible power and filling of the Holy Spirit is ready and available for you right now before the restrainer is removed out of the way. He's still calling out to you. Why don't you repent tonight? 2023 tonight before it hits midnight hour some places it's midnight hour why don't you repent of your idolatries tonight your sins tonight your wickedness tonight your ways tonight and get right with God tonight so that 2023 that no matter what happens can be joy in the midst of chaos peace that surpasses all human understanding your belly flowing, overflowing with rivers of living water. See, this is the only way 2023 is going to be good for you. You got to have the Lord. You'll be singing songs and hymns and spiritual songs, making melody in your hearts to the Lord. You'll be full of joy, full of hope. You'll, your veil will be lifted off your eyes, your mind. You can see the things of the Spirit. You walk in the Spirit, not the flesh. You, you walk in the Spirit. You serve God by the Spirit. The Holy Spirit and the Lord speaks to you. You hear His voice. You commune with Him. You have a fellowship with Him. You cry out to Him. You praise Him. You honor Him. You, you, you hear His voice. My sheep know my voice. And a stranger's voice that will not follow. This is the joy of being saved, but some of y'all are going to be groundhog. Okay? Some of y'all are going to have Groundhog's Day in 2023. Because you got, you're got running your life your way, and you ain't ready. Boom! You ain't ready. That's up to you. You can hold on to your pride and your arrogancy. Or you can humble yourself. It's up to you. Many of you guys are full of pride. I, I don't care. I've talked year after year for 10 years on social media. 10 years. I'm saying the same message. And 10 years later, y'all are still in sin. I get worked up. Y'all are still in sin. 10 years of saying the same message. Just like Ezekiel. Ezekiel, tell them, speak to them. They ain't going to listen. Ezekiel, they ain't going to listen, but keep telling them the truth. Keep telling them the truth. Because on the day of judgment, my voice and other people that you heard, you ain't going to have no excuse. This is why God does it. Keep talking to them. They ain't going to listen to you. Because on that day when you stand before God, you will not have any excuse. Many of you, multitudes, Many are narcissists, Christian narcissists. You're self-deceived. You call everybody else a narcissist, but you yourself are full of evil, dead man's bones, religious on the outside, but unchanged on the inside, doing all the church work, pastors preaching behind the pulpits, religious, no transformation. Some of y'all, music ministry, no transformation. Children's ministry, no tra no transformation. You cry over no one. You don't care about you. You don't weep and weep night after night over your unsaved loved ones. You don't care. You care more about them getting an education and becoming su successful than rather entering the kingdom of God. Come on, come on. I'm done. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Get ready for what's coming. It's going to be a shaking. That's what the new year offers, a shaking. Because we're getting close to the return of Jesus Christ. It's going to be wild. Put on your seatbelts. Get ready for a wild ride. It's going to get worse in the world. But for the believer, Jesus is coming and we can look forward to that. Okay? We got joy, peace. 
we got a future that nobody can take away from us but us. Do not, do not go back. Do not compromise. Cut those relationships off that are pulling you back. Those unbelievers. Cut them off. Cut off your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your best friend, your ex. I, I don't care who it is. Cut them off that are pulling you away from him. If you're living with somebody, repent of your immorality. Move out. I don't care if it costs you a bunch of money. If, if you are smoking pot, repent today. If you're, you're drinking and getting drunk, repent today. Today is this day of salvation. If you're on drugs, repent today. Get help. Get the help that you need. Get the counseling you need. We're getting in for a wild ride. And do not compromise. Only be around those people. Witness to everybody, but only have your inner circle people that are filled with the Holy Ghost and walking in the Spirit. The rest are just going to pull you away from God because they don't get it. Okay, I'm done. God bless. Mwah. I love you. That's why I talk to you this way. I want you to make it. God bless. I'm sweating. <laughs> God bless.